all right right today i'm going to show you how we're going to put a borehole in which will give us basically free water well not free because obviously you've got the initial outlay of putting it in but you know it'll pay for itself within the amount of water we use for the cattle we reckon it'll pay for itself in four years this is the reason why i want a borehole because just up the road there's a big big water main that goes underneath this road and it's burst for about the sixth time this year because it's an old cast one so it just keeps cracking and then finding the next best place to burst at so here is the problem in this hole here this is why the cattle don't have any water so just there is the new piece of main they've put in so there's an old cast one just just there and it just keeps bursting because it's so old it must be you know, probably 100 something years old now and that's not good because obviously when this bursts our cattle don't have any water for probably three or four days and we have to go and collect it in bowsers and keep coming back and obviously filling all the cattle's water up which is a big inconvenience for us so that's why we're going to go down the route of putting a borehole in so we don't have this problem so the first thing i need to do is find out is there water 100 foot beneath our feet and the best way of finding that out what i've found is go on the british geological survey so british geological survey website so i'll show you that now so here we are borehole records on the british geological surveys website so we're going to go on here what it tells you all about what is a borehole record onshore so we're going to search onshore borehole records you can search offshore which is obviously under the sea and it's a really good website to be fair because you can search like where there's been earthquakes there's lots of interesting stuff um about it so we're gonna zoom in so it basically just goes onto this map and then it'll give you loads of little dots of where all the boreholes are so here's the yard and you see all these little dots here they're all boreholes that have been you know there's thousands of them all around all around the country and they all have their own reference number so if i go and click on this borehole here it gives me a name and then we can we can look at the record and it will show us so this is this tells us everything about what was found in that borehole so it was done in 1958 so we've got about a foot of soil and then Lincolnshire limestone which is 71 foot so water struck at 68 68 foot so we know that there is water under whereabouts we are at the moment and obviously under that we're going to lower clay four meters uh, four foot of that ironstone under, underneath the clay 22 foot of that and then we've got jurassic it's up elias clay so six foot of that so they went to a total depth of 100 foot so whilst we're here i'm going to check another one that's near the yard go on to this one so it should be roughly the same uh, let's go down this one was done in 1959 so a year later Lincolnshire limestone, yeah, 60 foot, look, water struck at 67 foot, so we definitely know there's water under the yard. The only other way of testing if there's water under the yard, well, if you can't use something like this, is to drill a hole with a drilling rig and just go down and see what's there. Sometimes you'll drill a hole and there'll be no water there at all. And there is the drilling rig. So this is going to drill down about 170 foot about over there just just behind that container over there we're going to have the bore hole here comes the drill this is the mass that stands up there's the actual motor and drill these here are the rods These are all the rods you keep screwing on, keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. Just put 
the mast up. We're gonna have the bore hole just over here. Here's the first bit, got the cutting head on it. And we're gonna turn it, screw it together. There's the cutting head, just there, uh, the diamond carbide <laughs> tooth diamond head going through the rock. This pipe fills it full of air and blows all the dust out of the way. Now you can see we're starting to get into the clay. 
little bits of clay coming out now. So each rod's about 10 foot. And we're on the 10th rod now. This is all the Jurassic clay, like it said on the borehole results. Just starting to get through all the clay, going down, go down another 60 foot into the into the water, so it doesn't ever dry up. In the summer, obviously the water table drops, so we want to be as deep as possible. So disaster has struck, we're down at 200 feet now and uh, unfortunately we've gone into like a, a clay cavity so instead of going straight down like that it's gone in, it's got like a bubble so when you try and blow all the stuff back up the hole it's just blowing it all into this cavity which is pretty annoying because it's sort of a 1 in 200 chance of that happening so we're going to move the whole rig about 50 meters behind us and uh, have another go and hopefully this one will be successful so we've moved the rig to here now here's a compressor so then we can have the bore on it's the water tank hopefully fingers crossed but he's gone in the first rod and halfway down the first rod he's hit a stone cavity and it stopped the drill dead so uh, i don't know well a stone cavity is better than a clay cavity further down so Hopefully that'll be the last cavity to um, to annoy us today. So I've just filled the old borehole in that we drilled just over there. I'm just tidying it all up and I'll re -grass seed it all. This is all the clay that's come out from about 200 foot down. Very interesting to think that this clay here hasn't been seen for over 200 million years and this is the first time it's ever seen light of day. Hmm, interesting. Back again. We're about two rods down now, so open and praying, fingers crossed, we can do it. Yeah, the rod, they, so these when the holes drilled these are what go down it and they all screw together so obviously it all can't collapse in on top of itself then in the bottom of the hole we've got some pea gravel that we put down to sort of semi help filter it all right all the clay all wet and horrible first thing we're going to do we're going to dip the hole so we're going to see what water what level the water level's at and then hopefully it'll be all right I know you did. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> oh, 
more sight then. Sixty foot. Right, well, we're going to see if there's any water in by blowing it out of the hole now. There it is. Is it? Yeah! <laughs> right, so there's 18 of them sleeves in, so we're down 180 foot. So the first four sleeves have got like fins on them to let all the water in, and all the rest are sort of solid. So we're going to back this machine up now and have a tidy up. Now putting the gravel down through about a ton and a half of gravel, fill it all the way around it so it protects it and also doesn't fill, bung all the fins up with like crap so the water can still flow through it. Yeah. Big pump. Insert now. In goes the pump. I like it. So we've got mucky water to begin with. That's all obviously what we've disturbed. And then over about a day we'll let it settle and it should be pure clean water coming out. Right, so I've just done a calculation. This bucket's three gallons, and well, you can actually see the water is actually getting clearer as each minute goes on. So hopefully, 24 hours time, this uh, this water will be, you know, crystal clear. So anyway, I've done a calculation. So here it is. Sort of. Right, so if it's doing, I timed it as well. So I filled that up, and it took it took 50 seconds to uh, to fill that up. So let's give it the benefit of a doubt. We'll call it a minute. So three gallons a minute, that's 180 gallons an hour. 180 times 24 is 4,320 gallons a day. So times that by 4.5, which turns it into litres. So 19,440 litres a day. And that's the minimum, because we've got it turned down at the moment. And we have just put the dip back down the borehole and it's at 27, 
27 meters so we've got there's 27 meters of water in the bottom of the hole so i can't see that running out anytime soon so that's really good what a result so nearly pretty much 20,000 liters of water a day free of charge couldn't ask for more so what done now the water's running clear put it up into the top of this tank up in there which i'll properly put it in the side and we're going to put a float valve in it so what it does the pump when when it gets up to up, the water gets up to the right level it will cut the pump out down there so i'll have electric to the pump and the float valve will cut the pump out so there we are and that is uh my way of um getting some free water out of the ground comment and let me know what you think and uh i'm on instagram tomlam980